It's Chicago Breeze basketball. It's June 23rd, and we are in the gymnasium at Alverno College. It's the Chicago Breeze with a record of 2-0, taking on the home team, the Milwaukee Aces, with a record of 2-1. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Fleischman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Sitting to my right is Hami Arain. Hami, the Chicago Breeze have won two hard-fought games for their undefeated record so far. Yep, this is week four, but this is our third game of the season. Uh, they defeated the Bandits by 13 points, and then a thriller against Flint last Saturday. Uh, so let's see what's going to go on uh, today against Milwaukee. Whoever wins today gets first place. Of course, the Breeze will be playing the rest of the season without Bree Blair, who has moved on to an Icelandic basketball league. We're going to talk in just a little while with head coach Duval Richardson, talk a little bit about how he's moving on from the loss of one of their key guards. But right now, let's take a look at both the Breeze and the Milwaukee Aces coming into this game. The Milwaukee Aces are 2-1. and one. Their victories come over the Indianapolis Bandits and the Illinois Warriors. Their lone loss comes to the Flint Monarchs, who the Breeze saw last week. Milwaukee is coming off of a win, and they have the reigning GWBA Player of the Week in Sam Price. Sam Price, a 5'9 guard, grew up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and went to St. Cloud State University. She put up 15-9 and nine with two steals against the Warriors. And so we'll have to see what the Breeze want to do about that. Meanwhile, on the other side, story for the Breeze has been intimidating play down low, whether it comes from MC Smelzer or Keela Beecham, honey. Yeah, that's right. Two big players who can play very physical, and they go after every rebound like it's their last chance. And that physical presence inside, combined with some great halftime adjustments, ensured that close one-point victory over the Flint Monarchs. That was an important home test against the reigning champions and a team that we could clearly see is the cream of the crop in the GWBA. Yeah, yeah, you could say that again. Uh, Flint is definitely a very uh, well-established organization. Very happy to see the Chicago get that win last week because it came down to the last minute. Uh, you know, a couple jump shots here and there. I think it came down to the final free throws, uh, I believe, that, uh, by Bree Blair to win them the game, to pretty much seal the deal. Um, but yeah, great defensive effort. Chicago can play inside and out. Uh, we haven't really seen Milwaukee, so we'll have to see how they play today. And you know, every team plays each other twice, so this will be uh, a new thing for all of us today. It's the Chicago Breeze here in Alverno College against the Milwaukee Aces. We've got tip-off coming up shortly. But before tip-off, we're going to talk to head coach Duval Richardson. This is Breeze Basketball. I'm Mike Fleischman. That's Hami Arang. Mike Fleischman here for the Chicago Breeze. I'm with Breeze head coach Duval Richardson. First of all, congratulations on a close and hard-fought victory last week against Flint. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. The team is clearly fearless. They were ready to go, particularly down the stretch in the second half of that game. What, what role do you play and what role do the players have in making those plays so fearlessly and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with such an accomplished team? It's the energy that those two Indianapolis girls bring. Um, Taylor and um, Ariel, those two girls, you know, they bring a lot of energy for us. Taking a look at the free throws, this has been a story in both both games. No made free throws in, in a first quarter for the Chicago Breeze yet, but down the stretch in the fourth quarter, 20 of 23. And what kind of adjustments are you making to get to the line and start getting them down as you go into games? I think we like heavyweight fighters. You know, we want to fill them out in the first quarter, and then second quarter we get it rolling, and then we're downhill. Once those girls get ready to go, you know, we're there. Mm -hmm. Also looking at uh, looking at the strategy from the from the Flint Monarchs, um, Crystal Bradford had finished with 16 points, but only four in the second half. Taylor Gleason, who you mentioned in the interview ahead of time, held scoreless in the game. What was your game plan to to uh, shut them down? In the case of Bradford, what adjustments did you make on her to keep her quiet? Well, we wanted to put her in pick and roll. We want to put her in the pick and roll, and then. With Taylor Gleason, we wanted to make her a ball handler. We was going to run her off the line and make her a ball handler. All right, and taking a look at, at the roster for today's game, Bree Blair is uh, is going to be playing overseas, so that's a uh, that's a change. How are how are you going to adjust as a team to uh, to make up for the loss of such an intense player and such a uh, such a dynamic backcourt scorer? 
Well, this next woman up, Shantae Glenn, gave us good minutes last week, so she's going to step into the starting lineup this week. And um, Zaporia Smith is someone, like I told you before last week, is my ace in the hole. I kind of know her from, you know, from Governor State. Taking a look at both games and talking about next woman up, in both games you've had 10 players on the score sheet scoring. Um, where does that kind of balance come from? Is it just unselfishness from the players, or have you tried to work like a, a system and a philosophy to get that kind of balance? Well, on one hand, it is um, a system because we're like, we want to give you, I asked them, give me two to three hard minutes, and then at that point, come out and we're going to keep the pressure on. We're going to keep, you know, pressing. That's what we want to do. Keela Beecham with a double-double in that game. Uh, she was able to play important minutes down the stretch in the fourth quarter. Uh, how's, how's her game coming along? Well, we've been texting all week long, and I told her she was giving me baby double-doubles. I said, I need you to give me the best player on the court double-double today. And uh, finally, Coach, taking a look at the Milwaukee Aces, um, you're on their home court. They are, uh, they're an accomplished team, 2-1. and one. What do you got to do to get the W today? I think they like, they like to go through Covington. She's out of um, University of Wisconsin, the 6'2 player. They want to go through her. They have shooters around her, but that's their go-to person. So we're going to try to put her in some pick and roll, you know, and, and tire her out on the defensive end. All right, good luck to get today, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Chicago Breeze basketball. We're almost ready to go here from the gymnasium at Alverno College. I'm Mike Fleischman. That's Tommy Arain. It's week four in the GWBA regular season. We're going to take a look at the starting lineups for both teams. Let's, let's start it off by looking at the starters for the visiting team, the Chicago Breeze. For the Breeze, they'll start number 10, Ariel Easton. She is a 5'5 shooting guard out of Northwest Missouri State. Next to her will be number 15, Kendra Shelton. Kendra Shelton, 6'1, coming to the team out of Jackson State University. Shante Glenn will be the third starter in this lineup. Shante Glenn, 5'5 five five out of Lewis University. Akaya Taylor, their 5'11 slashing forward out of Michigan State University, and they're rounding out the starting five for the Chicago Breeze. It's MC Smelzer, she's six foot two, she's right in the middle, and she is also out of Jackson State University. The home team today, the Milwaukee Aces, they will start number one, Jerrica Watson out of the University of Iowa. She is also their head coach. Mariah Morton, a 5'10", Forward slash guard next to her from Dartmouth University. Trisha Patton, also 5'10 in the starting lineup from Free Hardeman University. Terry Stamps at 5'7 will be a guard out of Florida Atlantic. And then rounding out the starting lineup for the Milwaukee Aces, it's Mariah Brown, stands 6'1 out of the University of Miami. Tommy, we've had a chance to take a look at the Milwaukee Aces as they're warming up. A little bit more size at guard, but I found myself wondering who on the Milwaukee Aces is going to be able to stop the ball and deal with the smaller, more athletic guards of the Chicago Breeze. Well, as long as they can keep up with them on the defensive end, closing out the right way, boxing out on defense, I think the Aces will be fine. But I think the question is, can the Breeze, can they make their shots today? They look good in the warm-up. This will be Shelton facing off against Brown for the tip. And we are underway from Alverno College. Tip controlled by Shelton. And the Breeze will start it off. Here's Glenn up top. Swings right to Taylor. They go high post to MC Smelzer. That's off. It's tipped out of bounds. It'll be out of bounds off the Chicago Breeze. And the Milwaukee Aces will get their first possession of the game. Yeah, I don't know about that possession for the Breeze. They kind of rushed it. MC did. She was triple teamed and shot that. Stamps for the Aces gets it ahead to Mariah Morton. They go inside. There's Jerrica. Shot is disrupted by MC Smelzer. Down goes Watson, and here come the Breeze. Shante Glenn, right wing, gives it back up top. Ariel Easton. Ariel Easton looking at a 2-3 zone. Akaya Taylor steps past her assignment, goes in to get it. Ball is tipped out. There's Taylor rushing out to tip it, and they'll say last touch by Trisha Patton. It's Breeze basketball. MC making up for that miss on the other end with that block over there. And Taylor, of course, always hustling to get that board. Still scoreless here. 
Shante Glenn sets it up. It goes to Ariel Easton. Ariel Easton on the wing. She drives in baseline. We have a whistle. Play will stop. They'll get Trisha Patton with the foul. I thought Easton was shooting, but they're going to say it's baseline. And they're looking for a timeout. We got it here. Duval Richardson asks for a timeout. Duval Richardson gets a timeout. And so with 9.16 left in the first quarter, 44 seconds have gone by. We've seen one foul. We've seen a couple of missed shots. These teams are starting to feel each other out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that uh, Aces possession was ended up in the block. And the Breeze uh, with a jump shot by Smelzer. Uh, not the greatest idea. She kind of rushed it a little bit. Uh, but let's see what... Let's see what the Breeze can come up with here, trying to get the first points of the game. I thought Easton was fouled. I thought she was going to shoot free throws, but they're going to say it's baseline. They'll say it was on the floor before the shot, so here's Shante Glenn underneath the Aces basketball looking to inbounds it. They find Smelzer. She puts a move on. She kicks it back out to Ariel Easton. 4-3, no good. Rebound comes down to Morton. Here come the Milwaukee Aces. Morton's going to pull it back. She's got Glenn on her. Morton looking to go right. Here's the handoff up top. Ball bounces out of the hands of Patton. Now she'll pick it up again, and the Aces will reset. 12 on the shot clock, looking for Watson inside. Glenn didn't need to touch it, and it will stay Milwaukee basketball. A couple of times they've had Jerrica Watson coming free underneath, but then the rotation arrives just in time. Morton to inbound. She's got to get it in. She finds... Stamps on the wing. Reaching in is Ariel Easton, and they will get the first Breeze team foul. Easton with a little bit of greed on that one. Mariah Morton's going to inbound. They'll put 24 seconds back on the shot clock for the Aces. Morton ready to inbound. Morton finds Stamps. Stamps working right wing again. She's got Easton on her. Easton talking. Here's the screen. Free throw line jumper is too strong. MC smells her as the ball tipped out. And now it goes inside to Watson again. And Watson on the left baseline able to lay it in. There's the first two points of the ball game. They belong to Jericho Watson of the Milwaukee Aces. 8.27 left to go. Shante Glenn handling it up top. They go into the left corner. That's Akaya Taylor. Now back up top to Glenn. She's got the three. No. Akaya Taylor is everywhere. She grabs the offensive rebound. Here come the Breeze resetting. Ariel Easton goes back up top to Glenn. Glenn steps it back to the Inferno's logo. Now she swings it right. Easton's open for three. Too strong. Again, Shante Glenn tracks it down. And then there's a bad pass. And unable to control it is Terry Stamps. It'll stay Breeze basketball. Fresh 24 on the clock. Yeah, Stamps read Easton like a book there. Mm -hmm. Almost going for that steal. Good hustle from Ataya Taylor keeping this possession alive. If you read the scouting report on Shante Glenn, she's quick, but she can throw an errant pass every once in a while. There's Easton off on the baseline jumper. Jericho Watson with the rebound, pushing it oh, up ahead on the break. What a Great pass. Bounce pass by Mariah Morton, and Terry Stamps gets the easiest two she's going to have. What a fantastic lead pass by it's Morton. Four 4 nothing Milwaukee. There's a flash pass inside. MC Smelzer looking to go high-low. Smelzer with a bad pass. Now we have a two-on-one breakout. Morton on the finish, and now this is a 6-2, 6 nothing run in the first two minutes and 30 Morton seconds of this down. game. She's holding on and to her Morton knee. has gone down hard. I did not watch the finish of that play as as a number of Milwaukee Aces are running with a great deal of concern heading that way. At the dead ball, Letitia Bennett will check in for the Chicago Breeze, and uh, hopefully Mariah Morton is okay. She is still down up against the padding behind the basket. Morton with a big head of steam. Looks like she might have just gone straight into the wall. Yeah, I saw her face when, as she went down. She was grimacing in pain, holding onto that knee just very tightly. This is a very scary moment here because we saw Morton in the warm-ups and we're talking about how she has an endless amount of moves. This will be a big loss for Milwaukee. She's, she's been off to a fast start too. Yeah, very impressive with the ball in her hands. She's very fast with the ball in her hands. Can pick it up, can, can uh, throw the ball in directions that she's not moving accurately as a great way of leading to the uh, recipients of her passes. Looks like Keela Beecham will enter the game for the first time for the Breeze at the uh, at the dead ball. Beecham wearing number 30. She's a, a six-foot-tall veteran. She played 
College at the University of Kansas and Cal State Polytechnic. She has played with the Chicago Blaze, the New York Liberty. She has played in Greece, Poland, Turkey, Spain, and Romania. How about she that? is a U.S. Women's National Team gold medalist, and she is a uh, a presence down low for the Chicago Breeze team. Meanwhile, Mariah Morton is still down on the court. They are not moving that knee. There is a great deal of concern happening right now, and we will stay in this official timeout as we deal with, uh, with the situation going on with Mariah Morton. Let's reset the game a little bit. We're two minutes and 29 seconds in. I'm Mike Fleischman. That's Tommy Rain. It's the GWBA Chicago Breeze versus the Milwaukee Aces. We're live at Alverno College. So glad you could be with us today. A 6-0 run out by the Milwaukee Aces and then this, uh, this, this very concerning injury to Mariah Morton as they still have not moved her. It looks like they might no, they are, they are not going to stand her up at this point. And so we will remain in this, in this, uh, this official injury timeout. I want to remind you that uh, coming up next Saturday from Hales Franciscan High School in Chicago, the Chicago Breeze will be taking on the Illinois Warriors. Tip for that game is at 3 p.m. Uh, make sure to follow us on social media. Watch our, watch our game recaps on YouTube. We are on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We have a great Facebook group. Learn all you need to know about the Breeze and what's going on coming up next Saturday. That's June 30th from Ailes Franciscan High School, a home game for the Chicago Breeze. I mean, hopefully they'll be coming into that home game with the undefeated record. It's been a good start for the season for the Breeze so far. I mean, you know, we know last week they got, you know, some will call it luck if it was a one-point game, but, I mean, hey, a win's a win. Anything they can get. The way they've been finishing games, I would not use the term luck. They've been finishing so strong. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven made free As throws Morton's getting on in the fourth now. quarter. Yeah, Morton is getting on. Uh, she's not going to put any weight on that on that left knee. Nope. Yeah, this is going to be a uh, a long a long trip off there. She's starting to put a little weight on it. I don't think I've ever seen an injury like this, Mike. I mean, where just someone has just been. This badly injured. Now this is this is a tough one. Sam Price, the reigning GWBA Player of the Week, will take her spot in the lineup when play resumes. And plus Price for the Aces as the Breeze look to get the lid off the basket. They go on the left wing. There's a Kaya Taylor now back up top. Glenn, nice touch pass into MC inside outside to Letitia Bennett. She throws up an air ball. And Jericho Watson is battling a Kaya Taylor. Neither of them will touch it. It'll go out of bounds and it'll be Aces basketball. Another empty trip down the court for the Chicago Breeze. In the game is Julie Rader, and we have a whistle play will stop. I think it was, was it a delay a game, maybe? Yeah, I believe so. That will be ready to go here. Bring it up. That's Terry Stamps working along the right wing. She's got Glenn on her. Stamps goes into the post to Brown. Mariah Brown with a nice step through move. Doesn't hit the basket, but the whistle blows. Ace is trying to get two more on the board now. They'll get Keela Beecham for the foul. That's her first team second. And that will send Mariah Brown to the free throw line looking for her first points of the ball game. Quick release up with the right hand. She knocks the first one down, no problem. Seven nothing run to start this game for the Aces. Brown looking for one more. This one is left far short, right into the hands of Akaya Taylor. Tyler gets it up to Glenn. Breeze need a good possession here, need an easy basket. They find Keela Beecham, it goes in and out, rolls around the rim, no good, another one and done. Rebound pulled down by Annie Anna Lewin for the Milwaukee Aces. They want to walk on the bench, they won't get it. Corner three, meanwhile, for Anna Lewin is good. 10 nothing. how about this? And it's a 10 nothing run. They find Letitia Bennett in the corner, it goes in and out, it's tipped out once again. Here comes Price. Price with an open look oh. at the three. She knocks it down. 13 nothing run as Sam Price gets the tray. Jaleesa Olive and Zaporia Smith will check in for the breeze as Duval Richardson is looking for an answer here. Shante again flashes it into MC. Smells her. Smells her with the free throw line jumper. And finally the breeze are on the board. It's 13-2, 6.09 left to go here in the first. Bringing it up is Terry Stamps. Terry Stamps working the right side again. 
and Terry Stamps just dribbled it off her foot. That was a nice little aggressive step in by Shante Glenn to just fake out Terry Stamps. So Glenn will sit down, Bennett will sit down, Olive and Zaporia Smith will come back in. And a timeout we'll on get the a, court. We'll get a uh, Milwaukee Aces timeout. Akaya Taylor is in the huddle, being very vocal right now. She's handling this timeout herself, talking to this team. Yeah, Duval Richardson du letting the players yeah, uh, speak it out, and that, that's the right thing to do. This team, Milwaukee, just loving to run right now. They're pretty much getting all fast break points. That three by Sam Price was a very, a very ballsy shot, and she got that to go. Yeah, the Breeze are getting the looks, but they're just not knocking them down right now. This yeah. is a problem that they need to solve themselves. And uh, Coach Richardson stepping back, letting them do it. It's a pleasure to watch him work. Pleasure to interview him. Here's Zaporia Smith. She steps it over, crosses it over, knocks it down. Top of the key, 4-3. It is now 13-5 in and favor of the Aces. I know the game just started, but it's a huge shot right there. There's a little drive and kick. Price likes the three from the left wing. It's short. Underneath the basket is Anna Lewin. Lewin will get two shots and she puts it up and she's fouled. Zaporia Smith kind of laughing that one off. I don't know about that call, Mike. That one seemed kind of weak for a, a two-shot foul. They'll get Zaporia Smith on the foul, so stepping to the line, it's Anna Lewin. First one is up and short for Lewin. And checking in for the Breeze, sitting down as Smelzer, checking in is Bree Smith. So Lewin already has three points on the game on a made three. Missed the first. Southpaw puts it up, misses the second, but right underneath the basket, it's offensive rebounded out to Price. That one is no good, and fortunately, Beecham is there for the rebound. No one boxed out Brown that time. Here's Zaporia Smith, top of the key. She swings it left to Jalisa Olive. Olive drives baseline, now she comes back up top to Zaporia. Zaporia steps in the line, that's a long two, and Zaporia Smith has got some answers. It's now 13-7. 7-0 run by the Aces. It's good recovery by Akaya Taylor, letting, not letting Smith hit that. Brown swings it into the left corner. There's Lewin for three, and Lewin's got a couple of threes to go down so far. Lewin has six points here in the first quarter. We're halfway gone in the first. It's 16-7. to seven. Someone's got to get out on Lewin and get a hand in her face. Zaporia Smith slowing it down for the breeze. She picks up her dribble, top of the key. Finds Keela Beecham. Beecham in a crowd, kicks it out to Jolisa Olive. Olive's shot is no good. Akaya oh, Taylor is going to run down this offensive rebound. She's going to take the baseline jumper. She's short on that one. She's going to try and run it down again. Price has it, and then Zaporia, or Jalisa Olive is going to foul Price. For Jalisa Olive, that's his her first foul. Team's fourth. Tough break for the breeze there. Olive trying to go for that loose ball. She, at least she thought it was loose ball. But yeah, a foul Price, called. Price had her hands on that one. Uh, Akaya Taylor is, is more, more of the player you want running down those loose balls as they careen. Hey, and uh, Terry Stamps almost lost the dribble again. She gets it to Brown. Brown with the free throw line jumper knocks it down. Thought I saw a little uh, travel there from Brown, but <laughs> referees didn't. So, uh, hey, it's their job. Zaporia Smith drives it into the elbow. Now she kicks Good it pass. in. There's a great pass to Bree Smith. Bree Smith goes up and under. Shot is no good, but she is fouled. She'll go to the line for two shots. I mean, it's only an 11 point game. It certainly doesn't feel like that. They'll get Mariah Brown on the personal foul. Bree Smith so far has played in the, uh, in the game against the Indiana Bandits where she had two points. First one is up and good, absolutely no problem. Great free throw form there for Brianna Smith. Brianna Smith out of Moraine Valley Community College. And both of them are up and good for Brianna Smith. 3.58 to go. It is 18 to nine as the Aces have doubled up the breeze. Raider handling up top. Raider puts it on the floor, she dribbles right. Now she gives it back to Lewin, top of the key. Lewin looking for somewhere to go. Swings it to the left wing. Going in and in a crowd. Stamps leaves it short. Rebound to who else but Keela Beecham. Here comes Zaporia Smith. Zaporia Smith is going to draw the foul as, uh, as Price and uh, 
I think Price and Brown converge I there. I think you meant to say Jaleesa there. Yeah, Jaleesa Olive. My, my bad. That's Jaleesa Olive driving into that crowd. That's a great defensive possession by the Breeze on that last one there. And that's a foul. That's a second personal foul on Mariah Brown. Here's Akaya Taylor on the right wing. Akaya Taylor, they're going to isolate her. Now they'll go up top. Zaporia Smith, or Jaleesa Olive likes the range. Keela Beecham trying to track down the rebound. It's picked up by Price. Price is going to drive in on Olive. Price driving baseline, dribbles out of bounds. And that's a that's an unforced error right there for the Aces as they could have pulled that one back. It's Breeze basketball. Yeah, that's, that's two now for the Aces. Mm -hmm. Almost three a couple of possessions ago for Stamps. But the Breeze, let's see if they can take advantage of this. I mean, Eight. as long as they can keep it within seven. 18-9 ball game. Breeze with a lot of isolation dribbling right now. Need a few more, a uh, few more set plays. Here's Akaya Taylor dribbling on the right wing, getting it into Keela Beach. Some nice quick hands to deflect the ball is Jericho Watson. Oh, now Price is down. And now we have an injury timeout. This is actually uh, doubly not in favor of the Aces as they had Jericho Watson going out on the fast break, but uh, Sam Price is now down. So the injury bug here at the gym at Alverno College. Working against the Aces, Sam Price, the reigning GWBA Player of the Week. It's not looking good for her either. She is down. 2.51 left to go here in the first quarter. It is 18-9 in favor of the Milwaukee Aces. I'm Mike Fleischman. With me is Hami Arain. Price is still down. This is also a knee. This is also a very ugly, ugly situation here. It's the same left knee that Morton also hurt. I'm not sure if she landed on it. Yeah, I was I was screened off of uh, being able to see exactly what happened to Price as uh, as Jerrica Watson had the basketball and was looking to start the fast break going in, in the other direction. And there is, uh, Can't even I mean, there's not, not maybe the same amount of concern by her, her teammates. This might be just the worst cramp. It could be. It could be. It definitely could be. Because she's definitely not moving that knee. Yeah, it's tough to see what happened there. For the Breeze, meanwhile, a lot of a lot of one and done trips. We've seen them be able to get a couple of resets through Akaya Taylor's hustle, but uh, I'd like to see a little bit more moving towards the basket from the Breeze. They can put a lot of size out on the court. They've got small, quick guards, and then and when you've got a lineup that has Bree Smith, who stands six foot one, Keila Beecham, who stands an even six feet, and then Akaya Taylor, who stands five eleven. Uh, you can really get stuff moving towards the basket, and you've got uh, you've got some strong, fast players that you can work with. And it's also needing that that ball handling kind of motor engine. You know, we saw that with Bree Blair and, and all that uh, last week, um, and uh, you know today, no one really taking that initiative, for, uh, at least from the point guard perspective. Yeah, of course, this team is playing their first game without Bree Blair, who will be playing in Iceland. And it's a great story because Bree Blair has, has been absolutely incredible for the Chicago Breeze, more than deserving of that overseas basketball contract. Is they're, they're gonna have to carry Sam Price out of the gym, Mariah Brown carrying her out of the gym. So uh, that's more than a cramp, folks. Yeah. Uh, some tough, tough news so far as Price. Price and, uh, and Mariah Morton, both out of the game now. Very doubtful that either of them return. It's and, a shame. Yeah, checking checking in for the uh, the Aces is double zero. Anya Covington. Now, so Covington, this will be uh, Aces basketball as the fast break was cut short by the uh, by the injury. So Covington will inbound. She'll get it to uh, to Stamps and Stamps will work against Jalisa Olive. Stamps going right as she has been. Watson kicks it back out to Lewin. Lewin stepping through, tries to drive and kick. Lewin walks with the basketball. That's a turnover by the, uh, by the Aces. And with 2.39 left to go in the first quarter, it's going to be Chicago Breeze basketball trailing by nine. It's 18 to nine in favor of the Milwaukee Aces. And that's 18 points mostly on the run for the Aces. So if the Breeze can slow it down here, play their own game, 
More passing, too, as you mentioned earlier. More free throws. Looking to post up Beecham. Beecham on Watson. They go into Bree Smith. Bree Smith, two dribbles. Dribbles it off of her foot. And now it looks like they're going to they're gonna get a foul call here. They're going to get number 24, Lewin. I think it was a reach-in. I mean, some flashes of brilliance on the defensive end for the Breeze. Absolutely. Just on offense, they're selling for long twos. So here's Zaporia Smith once again. Zaporia Smith She's got, a three. got some room. She's got the range. She airballs it. Missed everything. And no one touches it. It'll go out of bounds. It'll be Aces basketball. Zaporia Smith has range for that shot. Hasn't been able to... Uh, well, she's gotten, uh, gotten five points down for, for the Breeze, but was way short on that one. Flash pass inside to Covington. Covington posts up on Bree Smith on the left block. They, she leaves that shot short off the front iron. Jericho Watson finds Julie Rader. Julie Rader with an easy jump shot. That was almost points. a rainbow from like three feet. 20 to nine, Zaporia Smith into the corner. It's Beecham. Beecham goes back up top. Jalisa Olive for three. No, Akaya Taylor wanted it, but Lewin snatches it down. Great, po great box out by Lewin. Stamps goes through everyone. No one stops the ball. Layup way too strong. Stamps cleans up her own miss. And right underneath the basket, Stamps lays it in. Ace is getting whatever they want right now. Yeah, Stamps rewarded there, getting her own rebound at the right, right place at the right time. 75 seconds left to go. MC Smelzer will check in at the next dead ball. Zaporia Smith gets it to keel up Beecham. Beecham guarded by Watson. They swing it back to Zaporia Smith. The, the, uh, the fronting on the post-ups is just taking away Shot the entry pass. And Zaporia Smith shoots an air ball into the arms of Jericho Watson. What a pass. That is a great pass up ahead to Stamps. Stamps finishes it. And it is 24-9. to Frustration now on the face of the Chicago Breeze. Akaya Taylor is upset and Jalisa Olive looking for an answer here. 40 seconds left to go. Jalisa Olive taking it to the rack. Can't finish. Tipped out by Bree Smith. Controlled by Raider. Here comes Lewin. It's two on three. And in the corner is Stamps for three. Just missed it. Keela Beecham on the rebound. 24 seconds left to go. One shot separating, one second separating shot and game. Saporia Smith guarded by Stamps. Uh, working on the right side. They're going to clear it out. Here comes Bree Smith to set the screen. Zaporia with a little give and go to Smith. And it's not handled well by Smith. Smith Here's a Smith. turnover. Oh, no. There's a Oh, you didn't need to shoot that quite when you did. The, uh, the Bree's out of sorts here in this first quarter. They've been outscored 24-9 to as the Aces will have 1.2 seconds and the ball underneath their own basket. Looks like they're just going to inbound it to Stamps and let the time run out. They will. And with the first quarter at an end, frustrating first quarter for the Chicago Breeze as they trail it 24-9. to Meanwhile, the Aces are clicking, but uh, the first quarter has extracted a toll, Tommy, as they've seen Sam Price and Mariah Morton have to come out of the game with injuries. Yeah, it's a tough break for the Aces, and but it seems like they're just picking up where they left off. Um, now I know they only played with like about two or three minutes without Price, but they've looked pretty good without Morton getting, uh, forcing a lot of turnovers, running it back the other way. It's been uh, all coasting for Milwaukee in this first quarter, but we've got three more quarters and we have a half hour left of game time, strictly game time. I think the Breeze can make a comeback and you know they're, they're in a kind of a similar position against Indiana in week one. They were. The Bandits were able to uh, to run out on them. The thing that the Breeze do well is that they adjust. They make good adjustments coming out of huddles and timeouts. And the biggest adjustment they have to make, Hami, is playing without Bree, ba Bree Blair, who brought a ton of intensity. Some confusion as to who's going to be on the court for the Breeze. Now they've got it figured out. It's going to be Styles, Glenn, Smelzer, Easton, and then Kendra, uh, Kendra Shelton. For the Breeze. Meanwhile, it's Stamps, Patton, Brown, Lewin, and Covington. A, uh, a very large lineup for the Milwaukee Aces. So uh, let's see what we got going on here as the Aces will inbound. This is Stamps bringing it up for Milwaukee against Zaporia Smith. Getting it to Brown. Brown with the 
spin move and lays it in. So Mariah Brown getting the little floater and she gets the basket. So Shantae Glenn now has it. Pull up two is off the mark, it was way short. Loose ball underneath, it's gonna be Milwaukee basketball. It's gonna be going off of Ariel Easton's hands. And here comes Milwaukee. Walking it up the court, this is Stamps against Smith. Full court press from the Breeze already. And now Stamps will have it at the top of the key again. On the drive, little floater, and it's off the mark. That's well, it's going to be loose, and it will remain with Milwaukee basketball. A crowd of Chicago Breeze right there resulted in that rebound being tipped out, and the, uh, the Aces will get another chance, exactly what they don't need right now if you're rooting for the Chicago Breeze. Long inbound pass goes to, uh, to Patton. Patton looking for somewhere to go. She goes to Stamps. Stamps guarded by Styles. There's Covington. Smells her fronts her. Covington with a with a pass just goes right through it. And now it is 28 to 9. 4-0 run to start the second quarter by the Aces. MC Smelzer goes inside to Kendra Shelton. Shelton's shot is blocked underneath. Deanna Styles picks it up. Styles slashing in hard. She goes down to the ground. She'll get a couple of shots as she's fouled. They'll get double zero. Anya Covington on the foul. That'll, that'll be the fifth team foul. We talked about the size earlier at the game for Milwaukee. It's really making a difference in this one. Get up. Playing the passing lanes on the defensive end. Throwing up, you know, throwing up their arms to contest shots as Deanna hits the first. Deanna Styles, a 5-3 guard. Styles out of West Virginia State University. Gets one of two. Spree's finally in double figures. This and be uh, ball. Yeah, Lewin just dribbled it right off her. Oh, they're going to oh, say Milwaukee say, basketball. They'll say Milwaukee basketball. I don't know about that. Nope, don't know about that one. That looked like Lewin's foot just committed a turnover. They go deep outside once again to Patton. Covington now on the elbow. Flash pass inside to Patton. She can't finish it. Nice idea, but poor execution. Ariel Easton coast to coast. Too strong. Rebound inside. Kendra Shelton grabs it. It's tipped out of bounds, and it'll stay Breeze basketball. It's one possession at a time for the Breeze. As long as they can get some points. MC Smelzer takes the inbound. Smelzer puts it on the floor. A couple of dribbles up top to Styles. Styles straight in, running downhill. MC Smelzer with the rebound. It's tipped out, and now it's going to be two on two. Here comes Stamps. Stamps trying to get it to Covington, and, and it'll go gonna... out of bounds. They'll say, uh, they'll say that's a turnover on the Aces. Taylor coming back in for uh, MC Smelzer. Smelzer will sit down, Akaya Taylor with it. So Deanna Styles free throw is the only point so far in the quarter for the Chicago Breeze. Deanna Styles crosses it over. Styles kicks it to Akaya Taylor. Taylor takes baseline. There's a great drive by Akaya Taylor. We need more of that from Coach Taylor and everyone on the Breeze. Coach Richardson telling everyone, get down, play defense, do it right now. It'll be Deanna Styles up top against Stamps. This is going to be a good matchup. Styles can really put you in her pocket. She gives it off to Patton. Oh, Patton there you go. Driving it in. You and called it. Styles. Styles takes it away. Three on three. Shante Glenn underneath. Now she'll pull it back. Keenra Shelton for two. Nice play by the Breeze right there. Taking it one, one play at a time. 28-14 as the Aces are still doubled up on the Chicago Breeze. Stamps getting some instruction. She's got Styles on her. Stamps says, clear it out. Let me deal with this myself. Into Covington. Covington tries to turn on Taylor. Nice high oh. loan. And Mariah Brown did everything except put it in the basket right there. You've seen the, uh, the Aces get those looks at the basket, be unable to finish here in the second. Shante Glenn, seven minutes left to go till half. Watch count. out! Ariel Easton getting sloppy as she's trying to listen to Duval Richardson. Easton goes past it. There's Styles thinking about the three. She takes it short, and the rebound goes to Covington. 
Styles not a great shooter from distance. She should have thought better about that one. Akaya Taylor tries to disrupt it. She does. Shot is no good. Here comes Ariel Easton. Easton pushing it hard downhill. Easton with a pull-up jumper from the free throw line too strong. Rebounded by Lewin underneath the basket. There were three Breeze and one ace, and the ace got it. Now here's a turnover on a bad pass. Taylor takes it away. The flash into Kendra Shelton goes off her hands as controlled by Milwaukee. Let's see if they can bring this up to court. Hey, you got to get eight up seconds. court. Yeah, eight seconds. That's eight seconds. That's ten seconds. That's a ten second call, yeah. She, she just sort of strolled it up the court. Stamps is in disbelief, but she was nowhere near half court. She was making absolutely no effort to get up there. Um, so uh, I'm pretty sure the fact that we said that is they made that call then. Yeah. Because I didn't think they knew. Flash into Akaya Taylor. Akaya Taylor takes baseline on a pump fake. She throws it right. She's looking for Sierra Anderson, who's seeing her first minutes of the GWBA season. Both teams seem to have lost concentration here in the last three minutes. It's 28-14, 6.06 left to go till halftime. Covington inbounds it to Stamps. Stamps has got Sierra Anderson on her. Stamps working on the left side. Stamps gives it to Brown. Back to Stamps. Stamps likes the shot. She gets it to rim out. Rebound to Patton. Patton up to Stamps. Stamps takes the lane, looking for Covington. Covington has it taken away. It deflects off the breeze. It'll stay right here. Aces basketball, 16 on the shot clock. Kai Taylor looking for that charge call. Is that a timeout? I think it is. Yeah, timeout for the Aces. The Aces will get a timeout. They'll head back to their bench. Haven't seen too many uh, too many baskets go down so far here in the second quarter. The the uh, the Breeze have outscored the the Aces by uh, by five to four. But you need more than that, yeah. Tommy. When you've got this kind of deficit, you need to get some turnovers, some fast breaks working. Yeah, I mean they the, the Breeze are committing more turnovers. I mean it ju that just seems like the constant of the game so far. They're just committing turnovers on the offensive end. Uh, missing easy shots. I mean, the Aces have missed more easy shots, but the Breeze have missed a lot of like open mid-range jumpers. Uh, not enough passing. Like I said, I mean, that motor with Bree, Bree Blair, I mean, you know, it's probably understandable. This is their first game without her. You know, things might be a little off. Yeah, we, we saw the, the Chicago Breeze really rise to the occasion with a little home cooking. Uh, that 77 to 76 victory over the Flint Monarchs. The uh, Flint Monarchs handed the Milwaukee Aces their only loss of the season. So the the Aces are a beatable team, but boy, they are uh, they are well coached today. They're running the break well, and their bigs are passing. Yeah, they're they're going high low very well. They're using weak side cuts behind the defense. Stamps on the right wing. Brown posts up to Ak 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 Akaya Taylor. Brown with a nice move back to the basket. That's some good stuff by Brown. Brown has seven points, and it is 30 to 14 now. A 16-point deficit for the Breeze. Shante Glenn working up top. Shante Glenn takes it back to the logo. Coming across, setting the pick is MC Smelzer. Glenn gives it to Akaya Taylor. They go into Smelzer. Smelzer working on Covington, and Smelzer is going to draw the foul. Go to the line for two. They'll get Covington. That's her second personal foul. That's the sixth team foul, so it's a one-on-one -on -one bonus from here to the end of the uh, of the quarter, Hami, for the Breeze. And that bodes well because when you've got a double-digit deficit, you got to score some points with the clock stopped. Yeah, no doubt about it. MC he... Smelzer has two in the game. Her first trip to the line. First one is up and good. Jericho Watson checking back in for the Aces. Covington sitting down. One more for Smelzer here. Smelzer, one bounce, bends the knees, puts it up, knocks it down. Great trip to the line by Smelzer. Stamps is going to be guarded by Sierra Anderson. Stamps goes past Anderson, a little drive and kick to Patton. Looking for Brown, she's got Smelzer on her, kicks it back out to Stamps. Stamps eyes the three, ball is on the ground, picked up by the Breeze. Shante Glenn, great pass into Taylor, and Taylor with the finish. Akaya Taylor has four, and it's 30 to 18 now. 
Brees just need to chip this away for the rest of this half. They need that from Shante Glenn, the quick bounce pass to a cutter. Raider up top, gives it to Brown. Brown has Glenn out on her, settles for oh. a long shot and knocks it down. What a shot. Mariah Brown showing you the range. It's 32 to 18. Akaya Taylor kicks it out to Sierra Anderson. Sierra Anderson puts up an air ball. It bounces out of bounds. It'll be Aces basketball. Not what you want to see from Anderson. I got to say, Mike, if you're open for three, it's inexcusable to, to air ball. We've seen a couple of air balls from the Chicago Breeze as the, uh, the Aces seem to know who they can sag off on and who they need to guard. Patton in the corner, guarded by Ariel Easton. Ariel Easton just got screened out of the way by Jericho Watson. Watson with the cross-court pass. That stamps, and stamps knocks it down for three. No. Stamps his first points of the second quarter. It's 35-18. Akaya Taylor on the other end. Uh, Patton almost took it away from her. They go back up top. Shante Glenn. Gives it to Ariel Easton. Easton gets the pick. Ariel skies it for three. Does everything but fall. Jerrica Watson running the fast break. Gets it to Raider. Raider pulls up from the left elbow. Shot is way too strong. Right into the arms of Glenn. We are under three minutes and 30 seconds here to go. It's 35-18. Shante Glenn drive and kick to Zaporia Smith. Zaporia Smith right in front of the Aces bench. Lo almost lost the handle. MC Smelzer turns, faces up. Shot is no good. Rebound goes to Patton. And now uh, Stamps fell over. She's going to pick it up. She's fine. Yes. Jericho Watson now handling top of the key. She's got Akaya Taylor on her. Ball goes into the corner. Stamps on the right side. What Flash a pass. pass inside to Brown. Pass again. The extra pass out to Patton. And she drains it for three. 38 to 18. It's back out to it's a 20 point lead. Biggest lead of the ball game for the Milwaukee Aces. They've gone into a 2 3 zone. Shante Glenn standing in front of it looking for MC Smelzer. Smelzer shot is short. There's the rebound. It's another quick one and done by the Breeze. And there's Stamps taking it aggressively in, and she'll draw the foul. They'll get that foul on number two, Shante Glenn. That's her first and the team's fifth. Team's sixth. I should say. So it's, it's a one and bonus from here on out for both teams. This will be Raider for the Aces to inbound. Raider inbounds to Stamps. Stamps has just been running this team for the Milwaukee Aces. Brown goes between the legs. That's too much dribbling from Brown. And Brown just fouled Shante Glenn while she was on the ground. That's not a bad idea by Brown right there. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous though. She tried to tried to trip her over. Yeah, stopping the break is important, but that is Brown's third foul. And so it's one in the bonus. And so a an opportunity here for some points. Shante Glenn will step to the free throw line. It's a very important here by Shante. Any point they can get. Shante Glenn, the left-hander. First one is up and nothing but net. That's our first point of the game. Glenn was huge down the stretch against the Flint Monarchs. See if she can help her team get back into this game. Second one is up. Gets a little rim and drops down. Shante Glenn makes it 38-20. to 2-2-2 two, 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 two left on the time clock here as we head towards halftime. Stamps gives it to Watson. Watson crosses it over. Watson on the elbow. Watson to Lewin. Now it flashes into Covington. Covington with a nice find. Watson on the baseline. And Jericho Watson drops it in. No problem at all. Beautiful no-look pass by Covington. Yep. MC Smelzer takes the baseline. She stepped on that baseline. And that's a turnover going back to the Milwaukee Aces. It's 40-20 with 1.58 left to go. Covington inbounds it to Stamps. Stamps will be guarded by Zaporia Smith. Swings it right to Lewin. Now they go back up top to Patton. Patton finds Covington on the elbow. She's got Akaya Taylor on her. She puts it on the floor. Now she's in trouble. Akaya Taylor trying to take it away. Now she's being hounded by Easton. Pass goes to Stamps. 
Stamps, steps past her defensive assignment. Can't get it down. Shante Glenn running the break. Shante Glenn's going to pull it up, pull it back. Flashes inside to MC Smelzer. Smelzer too strong. Rebound by Covington. Up ahead to Jerrica Watson. Jerrica looking to pass as she always is. Gets it to Stamps. She knocks it down and draws the foul. Wow, what a run by Stamps. And what They'll say no so shot. Far. No basket, okay. That, that is a fortuitous no shot as Akaya Taylor draws her first foul. And so that will put Stamps on the line for a one and one. Checking in is Letitia Bennett. Sitting down is Ariel Easton. Ariel Easton has not gotten into the uh, the scorebook yet. So a frustrating first half for a lot of these Chicago Breeze players as uh, Stamps eyes it, skies it, and makes it. 41-20. to 20. That one rims out, and MC Smells are fighting for that loose ball, and her and Covington go down. They'll say jump ball. Boy, that is, uh, that is some great work by Covington. Yeah, it's a tough break for the Breeze right there. You'd think that they'd get the rebound right to them, and then next you know the ball is loose on the floor. Two crucial players are out of this game for the Milwaukee Aces, and they're winning almost every hustle situation. Yeah. Smells will jump with Covington here. Smelzer wins. Yeah. Smells are, smells are going up, and then uh, Zaporia Smith in a crowd, and she'll be fouled by Lewin. So free throws here. Yep, Lewin, that's her second foul. Eighth team foul for the Milwaukee Aces, and that'll put Zaporia Smith out of Governor State on the free throw line. Zaporia Smith with the one and one. She's got five in the game so far. This is her first trip to the charity stripe. No problem on the first one. She'll get a shot at another one. And before she does, we're going to have a timeout. The Chicago Breeze have been shocked a bit here in this Alverno College gym, Ami. Yeah. And it's uh, it's just a matter of, uh, of hustle and effort by the Aces right now. The Aces... Ran, the, the Aces weren't showing a ton of energy in pregame, and then they came out just ready to run. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as we see uh, Price is there on the crutches over there, and I did see Morton stand up a little bit. So it's nice to see that they're both back on the bench. But yeah, you're right. Lots of running from Milwaukee Aces, transition basketball, and passing for days. Yeah, that extra pass, those cross-court passes, they clearly practice that as the second one goes down for Zaporia Smith. It's 41-22, to lead is 19 for the Aces. Stamps will be guarded by Shante Glenn. Covington tries to screen her off. They go to Patton. Patton on the wing goes back up top. Jerrica Watson. Jerrica Watson looking to pass. Now she takes it in on Smelzer. Layup is no good. Shante Glenn are under a minute to go. Here comes Glenn. Glenn dribbling with her head up. Glenn goes right past it. And then the ball is going to be tipped out of bounds. And uh, they'll say last touch by the Chicago Breeze. And Lewin will inbound it for the Aces. Another costly turnover there. Glenn trying to work past her assignment. And uh, everyone on the Breeze sideline wanted a foul. They did not get it there. Patton working up top. They go to Covington on the elbow. Covington turns in on Taylor. She kicks it to Stamps. Stamps with the three hits. Front iron. There's a good rebound by Letitia Bennett. And the ball will go to Zaporia Smith. 23 seconds left to go. Zaporia Smith crosses it over. Dribbling with the left hand. Zaporia Smith on the baseline. Shot is too strong. No good. There's Akaya Taylor. Shot clock is off. 12 seconds to go. Shante Glenn going to bring it back out. Nine. Glenn wants to pick. It's not coming. Here it is. Two seconds left to go. Shante Glenn turns and fires, and it's short. Breeze out of sorts on that final possession, and that's just a uh, an emblematic possession for this entire first half. As we go to halftime, it's 41-22 in favor of the Milwaukee Aces, and uh, the Aces just doing everything they need to do despite some, uh, some tough luck for the injury bug, Hami. Yeah, that's right. Uh, as you've noticed, the uh, Milwaukee Aces have scored 
or I should say the Breeze have scored more points from the free throw line than they have uh, in their field goal percentage. So only six points they've scored that wasn't from the free throw line. Seven points they've made at the line for the Breeze. So it's just been a little off. Uh, but it's mostly been the turnover game and the hustling, hustle from the Milwaukee Aces who have came to play today. They really have. It's just every bit of effort that you need to do, every uh, every extra pass, a, a just a, a, a sheer impressive effort by the uh, by the Milwaukee Aces so far. As uh, you know, I I'm impressed by not only the way the Aces are playing, but just the way that uh, the way that everything's set up in here. Or, uh, you know, we're coming into a to a uh, visit, visiting gym, and uh, we're being treated with a lot of hospitality here by the home crowd. I'm Mike Fleischman. That's Tommy Arain. We're at halftime. It's 41-22 in favor of these Milwaukee Aces. They've had such a such a tough situation and have responded so well to uh, to the injuries to Price and Morton. They just have come out and outplayed the Breeze in every aspect of the game. Um, let's take a look at the scoring so far for the Breeze. They've got 22 total. One point from Deanna Stiles. Two points each from Kendra Shelton and Shante Glenn. Two for Brianna Smith. Four points from MC Smelzer. Four for Akaya Taylor. And then their leading scorer is Zaporia Smith, who has seven. Meanwhile, on the other side, taking a look at the Milwaukee Aces. I'm just going to run down the score sheet top to bottom for the Aces. Anya Covington has two points, has done some impressive work on the defensive side. She's getting a lot of boards. She's getting in the way of what the Breeze want to do. She's denied three separate entry passes that I've seen, Hami. Jerrica Watson with four points. Sam Price with three before she goes out with the injury. Mariah Morton with two before she goes out with the injury. Trisha Patton with three points. Six points for Anna Lewin. Terry Stamps has 10, so the first player in double figures. Nine points for Mariah Brown, including a long jumper and some nifty post moves. She does have three fouls, so she'll have to be careful. And then two for Julie Rader. So it's 41 to 22 at halftime. I'm Mike Fleischman, that's Tommy Arrain. It's the Chicago Breeze on the road at Alverno College playing the Milwaukee Aces. It's the GWBA, and we will be back for the second half. Mike Fleischman and Ahami Arain back here. It's the Chicago Breeze and the GWBA currently staring down a 19-point deficit against the Milwaukee Aces as we are ready to go here in the second half. 20 minutes gone, 20 minutes to go. Hami, the Breeze need a night and day difference. They need to start getting the ball inside. Yeah, I mean, and also take care of the ball too and with, with, by all measures. Uh, Milwaukee scored more points in the first quarter than Chicago in the first half. Yeah, really, really a uh, a discombobulated effort for the Chicago Breeze. If you're looking for positives, the Breeze are nine of ten from the free throw line. They've been getting to the line, particularly in that in that uh, second quarter where they went to the line eight different times and were uh, were seven out of eight. It's Aces basketball to start here in the third quarter. There's Patton on the wing. Patton looking for Covington. Covington turns and fires and knocks it down. And Anya Covington has the first points of the second half on just the easiest little turnaround elbow jumper you're ever going to see. Ariel Easton gives it up top to Shante Glenn. Shante Glenn goes to MC Smelzer. MC Smelzer kicks it back out. They go to Easton on the right wing. Easton for three, no good. Smelzer trying to claw it away and it falls into the hands of Kendra Shelton. She gets it to Akaya Taylor. Taylor just smells her. It bounces off of Smelzer's hands, and then she throws it to Zaporia Smith on the bench, and it's Aces basketball. So at a miss, an offensive rebound, a reset, and a turnover. That's kind of been the story of the game so far yes, for the it Chicago. Has. So here's Stamps handling the ball for the Aces. Stamps just in complete control. Stamps almost double dribbled there but didn't as Shante Glenn hounds her. This ball bounces off of Mariah Brown's hands. She saves it inbounds to MC Smelzer. Ariel now. Easton has to run it. She's got to take it in. Kicks it out to Taylor. Taylor has that baseline jumper that she likes and she knocks it down. She's got six. It's 43-24. A minute gone here in the third quarter. Stamps flashes it into Covington. Kicks it back out to Patton. Patton with a Cagey little head fake. Stamps has position on the post. Great defense by Kendra Shelton after the fact. It, it falls out. 
No good. Comes to Akaya Taylor. Akaya Taylor spins in the lane, pulls up for the jumper. Akaya Taylor now has eight. That's a beautiful move by Akaya. Yeah, she's got to find some answers here against the, the Aces, and she's got to do it in the paint. That's an offensive foul, in my humble opinion. But they're going to get Shante Glenn on a blocking foul there. Shante Glenn was turned around, and Stamps was just riding her down the court. But they'll get, uh, they'll get Shante Glenn. That's her second personal foul. Deanna Stiles will check in at the next dead ball. Brown flashes it to Stamps. Stamps with a long two. It's off. Kendra Shelton corrals the rebound. Here comes Ariel Easton. Ariel Easton. Got stamps on her, goes right past her, goes right into Brown. She puts up the shot, she's fouled, and she'll go to the line for two. Can't ask for anything more for the Breeze so far to start this second half. They'll get number 23, Trisha Patton, on the foul. First team foul, and Ariel Easton will be on the line. Ariel Easton looking for her first points of the ball game. Ball game, you got to get her going, Hami. She's too good to be scoreless yeah. so far into this game. Yeah. Oh, Easton's first, first shot is too strong. Shante Glenn will sit down, and Deanna Stiles will come in. Nope, they'll, they'll bring, uh, bring Kendra Shelton out, and Stiles will go in, so the team will go a little bit smaller here. Ariel Easton misses the first, misses the second. MC Smelzer looking for the rebound, can't get it. There's a pass up ahead to Patton. Patton waits for Taylor to go sailing past her and lays it in for two. Boy, that's a bad turn of events after a uh, trip to the line for two free throws. Ariel Easton flashes in, Brown with the quick hands. It's attempted to save back out and it's another turnover. Breeze just pressing a bit too much, having some trouble catching the passes. Covington down court to Brown. Fortunately, Smelzer is there. Almost caught the breeze napping. Long cross court pass to Lewin. Akaya Taylor stops it and kicks it. And it'll stay Aces basketball. That's a great play by Taylor. Taylor's yes. been playing pretty well today on the rebounding end and uh, obviously on making her plays on offense and making her presence known on defense. There's a nice piece of defense by Ariel Easton disrupting the inbound pass. We'll do it again. It's 45-26. The lead stays 19 so far for the Milwaukee Aces. Yeah, as long as the Breeze can keep the Aces off guard to call a timeout here. And it's not been a bad start for the Breeze so far to the second half. But it hasn't been ideal. No, the team, you can't afford to play even right now, Hami. If you play even, it's going to be a 19-point victory for the Aces. Yeah. You've got to do something to, uh, to run out. You've... Um, you just have to start winning every possession, really, is, is what you need to do. There's no 19-point shot in basketball. You need to start just playing solid on every possession, getting yourself high percentage looks, playing within the flow of the game. If you start pressing, if you start throwing those passes too hard, if you start trying to overplay, it, you're going to get in foul trouble, and the aces are just going to uh, just gonna pick you apart. Aces inbounding underneath the Breeze basketball. They get in into, into Stamps. Stamps finds Covington. Covington from the right block turns around and knocks it down. Covington settling into the rhythm of this game. Shante Glenn goes right past Stamps. Great pass into Smelzer. It goes off Smelzer's hands. Smelzer needs to turn around and run the floor hard back in the other direction. Lewin now. Lewin looking up top to Brown. Brown She's walked traveled. with it, and that's a Aces turnover. Well, keep in mind, Smelzer does have that cast on her hand, which could make it harder to catch passes, especially these fast ones coming from Shante Glenn. 21 point lead, 47 26. Glenn slows it down against Stamps to get it to Styles. Styles working left side against Lewin. Now they swing it to Ariel Easton. Easton goes into the corner for Glenn. Akaya Taylor on the baseline. No one's guarding Taylor. She likes the shot. Smells her, trying to corral the rebound, and it'll be out of bounds off of Lewin, so it'll stay Breeze basketball. 22 on the shot clock. Raider will check back in. Lewin will sit down. Shante Glenda inbound underneath the Aces basketball. They go right into Smelzer. Smelzer too strong. Akaya Taylor rips down the offensive rebound, Ooh. turns around, knocks it down, and Kami Arain says, ooh, and he's right. That was a real nice offensive rebound turnaround put back oh, man. by Akaya Taylor. That's another player who's got moves for days. 
Taylor is an NAIA championship winner with St. Francis. There's Stamps for three. Stamps knocks it down, and the Aces have 50. Whatever the Breeze answer with, it's just not enough so far. Keela Beecham will check in at the next dead ball. Shante Glenn bounces it into the corner to Ariel Easton. Ariel Easton stepping into a jump shot. It's far too strong. Easton's been too strong all game. Here's Patton handling it up ahead. Raider likes the shot. She's a left-hander. She throws it up there. Uh, too many Breeze trying for the rebound. Covington takes it away from all of them. Covington has eight points. It is 52 to 28. Aces are starting to run out here in the third as they have all game. Styles finds Akaya Taylor. Taylor's jump shot from the baseline is too short and will have a foul underneath the basket. They'll get Smelzer with the foul. That's Smelzer her first. Is out as well as Ariel Easton. Her first team second. Easton sits down. Jalisa Olive, sharpshooter back in the game for the Breeze. Three quarter court pressure being put on by the Chicago Breeze. Patton guarded by Olive. Covington turns on Taylor, puts it up. Taylor gets a hand on it, knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay Aces basketball. 52 28. 532 left to go here in the third. Patton to inbound. She gets it up top. Oh, well, Patton just received the inbounds. Brown puts it on the floor, shoots over Taylor, goes to the bank, and the bank is open. Mariah Brown got a whole bunch of moves. Jaleesa Olive's open for three. Can she find the range? No, she's too strong. Akaya Taylor battling for the offensive rebound. Ball clamors around, and now it goes down to Stamps. Stamps finds Patton. Patton turns, Patton puts it up on the elbow. Rebound by Raider, and Raider puts it back up for two. 56 to 28. Lead is stretching out, and we're gonna see a, a, a whole line substitution for the Chicago Breeze. There's Keela Beecham underneath, can't get it. It'll go out of bounds and it'll stay Breeze basketball. Checking back in is Keendra Shelton, Breeze Smith, Letitia Bennett, uh, Sierra Anderson, and, and uh, and Zaporia Smith. So everyone that was out there for the breeze will sit down. Everyone who was sitting down is going to stand up. Letitia Bennett, fresh 24 on the clock. Goes out to Sierra Anderson. Sierra Anderson got to handle the ball. Sierra Anderson swings it right to Zaporia. Zaporia puts a couple of dribbles, takes baseline, kicks it out to Kendra Shelton. Kendra Shelton, long two, no good. Sierra Anderson's going to fight for the rebound and control it. Anderson steps through. And Anderson going to the bucket will get fouled and she'll go to the line for a couple of free throws. They'll get number 23, Trisha Patton. That's her third foul, team second. And Sierra Anderson looking for her first points of this GWBA season. will have a chance to get them on the charity stripe. Anderson, one bounce, spins the ball, goes up, and it's no good. Re-entering the game is Lewin for the Aces, sitting down as Patton. Anderson eyes it up, and she's got her first point of the season for the Chicago Breeze. Zaporia Smith hounding stamps up the court. Covington kicks to Brown. Brown is open for that long two, and uh, Covington tries to save it, goes right to Sierra Anderson. Sierra Anderson swings it right to Letitia Bennett. Bennett pulls it back, now Anderson. Anderson flashes it over to Zaporia Smith. Zaporia Smith on the elbow, finds uh, Kendra Shelton on the baseline, and that's a nice move from the left baseline by Kendra Shelton. Shelton now has four. Here's Stamps pushing it up. Someone's gotta stop the ball. Raider with the three, it's no good. Oh, man. Lewin comes out of the scrum with it. Lewin turns and fires, it's no good. Covington tries to control it. Out of bounds, last touch by Covington. It'll be Breeze basketball, 56 to 31. 25 points separating these two teams. Letitia Bennett gets screened off by, by, uh, by Shelton, cannot finish. Covington with the rebound, and now here comes Stamps. 
Stamps hounded by Zaporia Smith. Stamps goes past her. Gets it into Covington. Covington turns and fires and knocks it down. Covington in double figures now with 10. She's got eight in this quarter alone. Boy, what a game for Covington. Just working nice and easy uh, from free throw line on in. She has been automatic inside the paint. Zaporia Smith for three. That one's too strong. Hits the iron. Covington, who else, with the rebound. Covington's going to take it up herself. Here's Covington. you got to stop the ball on her because she's going coast to coast. Covington with a strong move. She's going to go to the line, I believe. She will go to the line as 24 will pick up the foul. That's Bree Smith. First foul on Bree Smith. Team's third. And so now Covington gets a rebound. No one puts the pressure on her. She goes coast to coast and will get two free throws. Running out of room on my score sheet here for Covington. Anya Covington just came to work today. Covington's first free throw is short. Akaya Taylor checking back in for Bree Smith. Fifty-eight to thirty-one is our score here. Two fifty-nine left to go until the fourth quarter. Second one is up and good for Anya Covington. Covington standing six foot two, went to the University of Wisconsin. That's some. You can see the serious D1 talent yeah. that this Milwaukee Aces team puts on the court here at Alverno. The flash into Taylor is no good. That's a bad pass by the Chicago Breeze. They took that one for granted, and the Milwaukee Aces took it instead. Raider with the jump shot from the left wing. It's good. Raider knocks it down. It's a 30-point Aces lead. Akaya Taylor. Putting it on the bounce against Raider. Kyla Taylor stepping oh, in man. is absolutely completely erased by Brown. Controlled by Letitia Bennett. Letitia Bennett puts up the floater. We have a whistle and a foul will be called. Two shots coming up for Letitia Bennett as they will get number one, Jerrica Watson, for the foul. That's her first and the team's third. Yeah. Letitia Bennett scoreless so far. We'll go to the line for a couple. First one up and good for Bennett. I know we're so used to seeing DePaul basketball, Mike, you and I, and a lot of outside shooting from DePaul. We're kind of seeing that with the breeze here today. It's just kind of looking like an off day. It looks like it would be an off day for a DePaul basketball team, what we're seeing today. Second one rattles around and goes off. Jericho Watson guarded by Ta Taylor, has to swing it over to Stamps, and Stamps is followed by Zaporia Smith. Second person personal on Zaporia Smith. Team's fourth. Deanna Stiles will check back in. So Stiles in, Smith out. Lewin, Brown, Watson, Patton, and Raider on the court for the Aces. I should say Stamps instead of Patton there, as she just shot and missed it. Here comes Deanna Stiles. Stiles going to pull it back. Stiles swings it to Akaya Taylor. Taylor takes baseline. Just puts the pass right on Kendra Shelton. But we have, we have a whistle, and they're going to get 55 Raider on the foul before that pass. That's Raiders' first, fourth team foul for the Aces. Team foul stand at four apiece. Inbounding underneath the Aces basketball is Letitia Bennett. She's going to throw it all the way back out to uh, Sierra Anderson. Anderson puts the ball right on Akaya Taylor. Taylor can't finish. Kendra Shelton, great offensive rebound. She can't finish. Ball bounces around, and that'll be Stamps controlling it, stepping on the line. Stamps frustrated right there. You have a 29-point lead, so uh, you know, you'll, you'll get that one forgiven. Yeah, she's looking for that timeout there. She was in the air, though. Letitia Bennett gives it to Sierra Anderson. Sierra Anderson walked with the basketball. The Breeze give it right back. Jerrica Watson to inbound. Breeze just never got into the rhythm today. Watson gives it to Brown. They're going to let Brown run the point. Brown got Shelton on her, crossed it over, picks it up. Shelton comes in on her. Overplay by Sierra Anderson gives Raider a little path to the bucket. She can't finish. Who else? Mariah Brown pulls it out of there. A little two-man game back to Raider. Raider likes the jump shot. No. And pulled down there by, uh, by Kendra Shelton. Sierra Anderson fires it up ahead to Deanna Stiles. Styles has Raider on her. Entry pass to Akaya Taylor. 
Taylor faces up, goes straight in. Akaya Taylor knocks it down. Uh, Taylor has eight in this quarter. Lone bright spot for the Chicago Breeze. Stamps has Taylor on her now. Stamps working right side. Gives it to Lewin. Lewin guarded by Glenn. Lewin going all the way in, and Akaya Taylor puts her on the ground. Akaya been the uh, only consistent performer today for the Breeze, the high point scorer with 12. So they'll say that foul is on Letitia Bennett coming in from behind, and that'll put, uh, put Lewin on the line for two. Lewin has six in the ball game. It's 61-34, first one is up and no good for Lewin. Anna Lewin, 5'10", went to high school at Brookfield Central, played her college ball at Northern Michigan University. Second one up and down for Anna Lewin. 62 to 34, Sierra Anderson, bad pass, looking for Styles. Stamps overplayed it, and it will stay Breeze basketball. Ariel Easton's gonna come back in for the Chicago Breeze. She's gonna go get Sierra Anderson. It's all been all turnovers today. That's the reason why they're losing by, by 28 points. Deanna Styles looking for that screen from Akaya Taylor. Styles finds Taylor. Taylor drive and kick to Ariel Easton. Easton takes baseline. Easton goes in on Jericho Watson. What and happened here? What did they call? Call an offensive foul maybe? I'm not sure, I didn't even see. They didn't put the foul up, no one called a foul. I think they're gonna call a, call a uh, stepped on the line by Ariel Easton as she took the baseline. So another turnover. Brown swings it to Raider in the corner. Raider for three, it's good, oh my goodness. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the consequence of playing half court press. 65-34, 31 point lead for the Aces. And there's a one and done trip as Mariah Brown pulls it out. Four seconds left, Mariah Brown swings it over to Watson. Watson at the buzzer, no good. We have played 30, we've got 10 to go. The Chicago Breeze getting run out of Alverno. It's 65-34 in favor of the Milwaukee Aces. I'm Mike Fleischman, this, and that's Hami Arane to my right. You're listening to GWA Basketball. You're also watching GWA Basketball. We'll be back for the fourth quarter after this. As we are underway once again, Easton goes to Akaya Taylor in the, in the right corner, kicked ball, and it'll stay right here with the Chicago Breeze. Well, we talk about the Breeze misfortunes, but how about the Milwaukee Aces? Their defense has been all over the place. But I really do think that if the Breeze lay down on the turnovers a little bit, this would be a very close game. We have 12 put back on the shot clock here. As uh, Crystal Ellis, Sally Gordon, and Dean Nemore working to uh, make sure our time is all correct here. Akaya Taylor crashing into the bucket on the left side. She puts it up, she's fouled by Raider. That's Raider's second, team's fifth. And Akaya Taylor's gonna go look for some freebies. Some points here for uh, Milwaukee. Nine for Covington, 13 for Stamps, 13 for Raider, kind of a quiet 13 for Raider, 11 for Brown. And, yeah, and uh, I've actually got Covington with 11. I might have missed one. So Coving Covington in double figures. Oh yeah, I did miscount. It's Taylor, I believe that she had both. Yep, Akaya Taylor got both of them, so it's now 65 to 36. Good trip to the line for Akaya Taylor. It's what you need, you gotta score some points with the clock off. This, uh, this game might be for pride down the stretch for the Chicago Breeze. There's a nice overplay by Taylor. Tips the ball out to Letitia Bennett. A lot and of that And Bennett today. gets it to Keendra Shelton. And now they've got to hurry it up across the timeline. Deanna Stiles gonna put it in on Lewin, going right into a crowd, pulled out of there by Patton. Patton's gonna move it up the court. Patton hounded by Stiles. Going over to, uh, to Covington. Covington swings it through into the right corner for Lewin. Lewin wild shot, gets her own miss, puts it up, and good. Story of the game. Second chances and good finishes around the basket for the Milwaukee Aces. It's 67-36. Give Lewin another two points. 
Kaya Taylor posted up, oh, blocked man. from behind. The referee screened me off. Is that Patton right in the back there? Yeah, that's Patton. That's some good work by Patton. They'll get a Kaya Taylor on the foul there. That's her second. Yeah, the They'll breeze. say that's the sixth team foul. They tried to go big against Milwaukee. Oh, there's a turnover. There's a turnover as the pass is a little too strong for Brown. Delisa Olive is checking back in for the Chicago Breeze. I think the Breeze just couldn't find their identity today. They were playing a little bit big at the start. They played a little bit small. They just couldn't find yep. out what was the right way to, to counter this Milwaukee team. But I guess, I know it's a cliche, but it's just not their day. Bree Blair with her work in transition, her ability to start transition, even off of made baskets, was sorely missed today. Nice steal by Styles. Nice there. drive and kick out to Ariel Easton. Easton just can't find it. Akaya Taylor goes and finds it, and she gives it underneath. Shot is no good by, uh, by Easton. It bounces out of bounds, and it will be... Chicago ball. It'll be Chicago Breeze basketball. 67-36, 8.28 left to go in this game. Styles goes out to Taylor. Shante Glenn's gonna check back in. Deanna Styles, nice bounce pass to Kendra Shelton. Shelton goes up with the right hand hook, it's no good. Tipped back out, it's Jaleesa Olive for there three, and there it is. Jaleesa Olive. First basket of the game. Loose ball. There's a loose ball, goes right into the hands of Raider. Raider cross court pass to the right. Patton likes it. But uh, tipped back out, Raider Lewin gets it. Lewin with an empty, empty path to the basket, and Lewin just lays it in on a second chance opportunity. Lewin with 11. 69 39, leads back up to 30 for the Milwaukee Aces. Deanna Stiles pulls Raider out on her. Jalisa Olive kicks it into the corner. There's Easton. Easton for three, knocks it down. There's the pressure. They're going to let Covington break the pressure once again. Kendra Shelton will stop the ball that time. Jaleesa Olive comes out on Raider. They fire it into Mariah Brown. Mariah Brown turns and shoots over Akaya Taylor, and they're going to get Akaya Taylor on the foul. Akaya Taylor visibly frustrated as she picks up her third foul. Seventh team foul, so one of the bonus here on out for the Milwaukee Aces. Mariah Brown going to the line. She's got 11 in the game. Nice turnaround jump shot. Kaya Taylor trying to be aggressive, but just a little bit too close to the shooter that time. But that's what Mariah Brown does. When you can pull yourself out past like 12 feet and make the deep pay as, uh, as Mariah Brown's been able to do today, that's, uh, that's what you get because everyone needs to front you. They can't just let you work out on the perimeter even as a big. Let's see what's going on here. Looks like some line up at the free throw lines, some sort of adjustments. Yeah, they'll get Kendra Shelton there, so Mariah Brown up with her second. Hits front iron, bounces off, careens into the hands of Ariel Easton. Here comes Easton on the left side. Easton looking for somewhere to go, she finds Shante Glenn. Glenn the southpaw up, glances off the front iron. There's Jaleesa Olive, she thought about it, she flashes it in. Shot is too strong, but on the other side, Sean Glenn. And it's not that the Breeze have played horribly today. It's just that their shots have just been so off. There's a, There's by a takeaway Shante. by Glenn. Glenn is going to get fouled hard there by Covington. And she saw it coming, too. She was bracing for it. Yep. Covington picks up her third. Has the six-team foul on the Milwaukee Aces and Shante Glenn. We'll go to the line and try to earn two. Boy, that's a, being able to maintain composure when you know that, uh, that Anya Covington, who stands six foot two and is an imposing physical presence for the Aces, is coming up behind you. And she's been playing tough all game. You know she's going to follow you hard. Yeah. And you still be able to put that ball up. That's good composure by Shante Glenn as she knocks down the first. You know you're going to the ground. Yeah. Stamps re-enters for the Aces. Sierra Anderson back in the game for the Breeze. Second one up and good for Shante Glench. Per perfect 4-4 from the line so far. Here is Stamps. If you, want, if you want me to give a player of the game today, Hami, it's Stamps for the Aces. 
everything they've done is just run through her steady ball handling. Lewin's shot is too strong. Sierra Anderson with the rebound. Sierra Anderson throws the ball off the back of Lewin. Lewin travels with it. Anderson trying to whip that ball, just threw it into Lewin's back, and then Lewin, with some great basketball awareness, turns around and grabs it. Just couldn't control it. Shante Glenn likes the three. No good, Patton with the rebound. Uh-oh. Oh, and uh, Lewin's gonna be all by herself at the other end, Lewin will finish. 13 points for Lewin. Ariel Easton handling it, it's 72 to 46. Ariel Easton box it down for three. Six points in the game now for Ariel Easton, all coming here in this fourth quarter. Mariah Brown gonna run the point once again for the Aces. Now she'll give it back to Stamps. Stamps holding it up by the Inferno's logo. Now back to Brown on the elbow, a little kick back out to, uh, to Stamps. Mariah Brown is everywhere. Covington now hands it off to Stamps. Stamps just fumbles it into the hands of Mariah Brown. We have a whistle. That was a call before the shot. But I believe there will be free throws. They'll get Ariel Easton for the foul, her second, eighth on the team. And they'll give, uh, yeah, it'll be one and the uh, bonus for Terry Stamps. What a game by Terry Stamps. She hits the first. Stamps' first point of the fourth quarter. 14 points now. Florida Atlantic University graduate. Second one is up and good. 15 points for Stamps. Bunch of great ball movement, great decisions. Oh, that's a nice head fake by Sierra Anderson. She gets it underneath the Styles. Styles with a no look pass. Glenn kicks it back out to Jolisa Olive, goes to Ariel Easton. Easton on the wing, steps in and knocks it down. Ariel Easton finding her range here in the fourth quarter. She has eight. And we'll have a timeout here. 528 left to go in the game. 74 to 51 as the, uh, the Aces have kind of taken their foot off the gas a little bit. Yeah. It's resulted in some looks for the Chicago Breeze, but uh, the Breeze going into a week of practice before they face the Warriors. I mean, they have, uh, they have got, to, got some work to do as they've got, to, they've got to find a new solution for moving the ball and working in transition as they've been without Bree Blair. Yeah, I mean, like, like we mentioned earlier, like it's, you, can't un, you can't overstate how important it is to have a ball handler who can just confidently bring it up, slow it down, speed it up whenever you need to, change of pace, all that good stuff. And 13 points against the Monarchs, 19 points against the Bandits. So uh, she's been their leading scorer, their most prolific scorer so far. And, uh, well, Akaya Taylor might be, nope, I don't know how to do math. She is their le leading scorer. <laughs> or was until we came into this game. And honestly, we didn't even know until Wednesday or Thursday, you know, that she moved to Iceland. She tweeted about it. I only saw it from the Chicago Breeze Twitter. Such a great opportunity for Bree Blair. It's it really, really the is. story of what, what the Chicago Breeze and the GWBA can do for, uh, for these, these women who are so passionate about really basketball. what it's all about, trying yeah. to get to somewhere like that. Speaking of opportunities, um, Angelina Williams is going to be coming back and she will be with the team in the game against the Warriors. Williams, a player last year, has been playing overseas. She will be back with the team next week against the Warriors. That's a home game at Hales Franciscan High School. 74 to 51. Five minutes left to go here in the game. Deanna Stiles slashes in, puts up a little floater layup. It's no good. Mariah Brown with the rebound. She's hounded by Sierra Anderson. Nothing easy as Covington has to get it up. Covington now crosses the timeline. Under five minutes left to go. Terry Stamps, guarded by Stiles. Stiles hands it to Covington. Little give and go back to Stamps. Stamps puts a shoulder into her and cannot get it to fall. Shante Glenn picks it up. Brings it up court. Ariel Easton looking for the range. This one far too strong. Patton with the rebound. Patton brings it out of the crowd. Hounded by Styles. Now she'll give it to Stamps. Stamps has to hurry up. Stamps does hurry up. Stamps finds Covington underneath the basket. Stamps will be fouled and go down hard. A couple of free throws coming up for Stamps as they will get number two Shante Glenn for her third personal foul and the team's ninth. 
if Kobe Bryant in 2018 was watching the Chicago Breeze game, doing his little detail episodes, he'd be talking about how the Chicago Breeze defense is focusing only on the action, which is whoever has the ball. Yeah, you've seen off-ball movement, weak side cuts, and long cross-court passes just, just really dissect the attacking, ball-hawking defense of the Breeze as the first, uh, first free throw by Covington is off. No and good. That's just not a recipe for success, honestly. Yeah, the Breeze have Especially not... Especially in transition. The Breeze have not made the extra pass. Meanwhile, the, uh, the Aces have made the extra pass in what seems like every possession. Covington's second is up and good. GWBA basketball, Breeze versus Aces. I'm Mike Fleischman. That's Tommy Arain. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for watching our YouTube presentation of this game today. Akaya Taylor swings it to to Styles. Styles with a hesitation dribble goes into Shante Glenn. Glenn too strong. Rebound by Mariah Brown. Mariah Brown is going to be hounded by Styles. Needs to go somewhere with it. Goes to Stamps. Stamps with 19 on the shot clock. Gets it across the timeline. So flips it to Patton in in the left corner. Patton goes to Covington left block. Covington turns around on Akaya oh Taylor and goodness. knocks it down. Wow. Anya Covington. Oh my goodness. Shante Glenn hands it to Jaleesa Olive. Jaleesa Olive likes the range. She's got it. Nice shot there by Olive. I love her form. Kind of has that quick Steph Curry type of form. Very quick release. They're going to let Covington run the point now against Akaya Taylor. Covington almost forgot to bring the basketball with her. Now they give it to Lewin. Lewin hounded by Glenn on the left wing. They go into Patton in the post. Patton with a little leaning hook shot. No good. Ariel Easton brings it out. Ariel Easton. Jump pass into Deanna Stiles. Deanna Stiles forgot to bring the basketball. Terry Stamps takes it away. There's a uh, three on nobody opportunity. And Patton goes oh, in. But Akaya Taylor coming in late with the block. Akaya Taylor hasn't stopped running today. Great effort by Taylor. 77-54. Three minutes left to go. Long distance shot, no good. Mariah Brown yanks it down, pulls it away from Akaya Taylor. Akaya Taylor still running hard here in the fourth. Oh, man. Stamps up ahead. Stamps up and good. In the corner, Ariel Easton, no good. Akaya Taylor rebound. Finds a, a cutting Ariel Easton, and Ariel Easton knocks it down for two, and we have a timeout. So Ariel Easton has found her way into double figures here in the fourth quarter, but a frustrating 30 minutes before that. And that, we, we've gone on about what the story of this game is, but really, the, the Aces' resilience and their, uh, their willingness to just run out and break down the defense, make, make the extra pass, they've been good in the half court. They've been good in transition. They've been good in ball hawking defense. And they've been good at just getting into the, the sight lines of the, uh, of the breeze, which is the difference in, in, uh, in this game to uh, last week's victory, Hami, I think is that the, uh, the Monarchs really didn't use their size inside. They stayed out on the perimeter, didn't make the extra pass, and uh, let the breeze dictate the tempo of the game. Meanwhile, on, the, on, on today's game, the, uh, the Aces were just willing to do all the little things they needed to do. And they, what a rally after two difficult looking injuries to uh, Price and Morton in the first quarter. To be able to, uh, to go into their bench, get some, uh, get some players out there. They're able to go deep, get some great minutes. Anya Covington has been just absolutely spectacular today. Mariah Brown is, uh, is making her case today. And Terry Stamps just completely unshakable running the point. Here's a little trap defense as they got Styles on Covington. And Covington smartly looks for Stamps as they've been able to do all game. Stamps flash pass inside to Brown. Brown spinning through the lane, puts it up on the left block. It's up, it's down, it's good. Mariah Brown has 14. Ariel Easton wants the range. Ariel Easton off the iron. There is uh, Shante Glenn in the lane, no good. Rebound to Mariah Brown. We're on two minutes left to go in the game. Up ahead to Stamps. Stamps she taking doubled. it all the way in. She double dribbled. 81-56, under two minutes to go. Definitely some frustration for the Breeze today as, as nothing that they've wanted to do has really worked in their favor. But they're going to have some practices this week 
they've got some chances to uh, to fix their mistakes. They've got a home game coming up, and uh, you know, you build the team with victories, Hami, but you also build it with losses. Yeah. When a uh, oh, there's a hard foul down on the other end. Yeah, Styles trying to go for the block. I think she hit her on the shoulder. Uh, she hit. That was uh, Stamps. So Stamps is going to be at the line for two. And yeah, you mentioned it. It's really about how they come, how they respond to this loss, how they're going to come out next week. We're really going to have to see in that first quarter how they how they respond to this loss. Yeah, um, yeah when, from a coaching perspective, wins uh, losses can be as instructive as wins. You can learn a lot from it, and you can really really challenge your team to, to correct mistakes. You know, when the team comes off a victory against Flint, the team might be making some assumptions. Mm -hmm. As, uh, yeah, Stamps had both of those free throws. 83-56 now. Easton for three. Errol Easton with 13 in the game, all coming in this fourth quarter. It's 83-59, to 117 left to go in the ball game. Stamps is gonna slow it down. Stamps swinging right side to Raider. Raider, nice little bounce pass into Mariah on the elbow. That is uh, tipped and knocked out of bounds. It'll be uh, Breeze basketball as they'll say Stamps touched it last. Stamps looking at the referee is like, are you sure that was me? And the referee is like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Long pass up ahead to Ariel East, and she's just shooting it whenever she touches it now. Akaya Taylor gets the offensive How rebound many and rebounds. puts it down. How many rebounds for Akaya Taylor? Many. <laughs> Mariah Brown has it. Mariah Brown has a Taylor in front of her. She kicks it to Raider. Raider with a little pull-up jumper, no good. Akaya Taylor gets Guess another who? one of her many rebounds. Deanna Styles now working it up ahead. Styles is going to go one on four. Kicks to Letitia Bennett. Bennett can't find the range today. Covington with the rebound. Errol Easton almost takes it away. And here comes Stamps once again. Going to pull it back against uh, the double team coming from Easton and Styles. Mariah Brown has Glenn on her. She'll give it back to Stamp. Stamp's going to work on the right side. The Nine pen. seconds left to go on the shot clock. 19 in the game. Stamps going to put uh, Styles in her hip pocket, cross it over, put up a shot from the left side. No good. Shante Glenn whips it up ahead to Ariel Easton. Ariel Easton skies it for three and knocks it down. And I think that'll be the final points that we see in this ball game as Covington just going to uh, let, the, let the time expire here as the uh, clock stays running on the inbounds. So your final score from Milwaukee, Wisconsin and Alverno College, it's uh, the Milwaukee Aces coming away with the 83 to 64 victory over the Chicago Breeze. We had a chance to talk about it all fourth quarter, Hami, but just a, uh, a truly, truly impressive statement victory by the Milwaukee Aces. The Milwaukee Aces want to be in consideration for, uh, for the uh, the marquee team in this league. The field is wide open so far as we have three teams right now, the Monarchs, the Breeze, and the Aces, all with a two and one record. Yep, all of which tied for first place. And next week, the Breeze will take on the last place team in the league, which is the Illinois Warriors. That will be at Hales Franciscan High School, June 30th, 3 p.m., and uh, beautiful Kenwood. Hopefully it will be as nice as it is here today in Milwaukee on that day. Because uh, last week it was uh, it was like 90-something degrees in that gym. All right. We're, uh, we're going to do a little post-game wrap-up. Before that, I'm going to see if I can talk to, uh, to Coach Ben here. See if we can get him over here. Mike Fleischman here. We're at uh, Alverno College. The, uh, the Breeze fall, their record is two and one. The Aces move to three and one, to correct my earlier statement. We're gonna see if, uh, if uh, Coach Lawrence Ben Creighton can join us here just for a few thoughts on how the game went. All right, Coach, uh, Coach Ben, I want to thank you for, uh, for joining me for a little, uh, little post-game wrap-up here. I just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about, uh, about, about what the Aces were able to do, particularly with, uh, with making the extra pass. Kind of talk about uh, like what you saw them doing right today for their, their win. Well, the Aces came out and played as a solid ball club. Uh, they executed each and every play. They beat us to the 50-50 balls. Uh, loose balls, they were all over them. We were just a step slow. Um, and, and, and that's that's where the game changed. They, they were on it from the jump, and we, we never could really recover. 
Um, talk a bit about uh, about what you saw from uh, from from your squad and uh, what what you can take into practice. I was mentioning to Hami kind of as the fourth quarter went on that sometimes losses can be as instructive as victories. So uh, what are you taking from this game and uh, looking to work on and practice from it? Most definitely, uh, this was definitely one we uh, we took on the chin. Um, definitely a learning experience. That's something that we, we, we know that we'll bounce back from. Uh, in practice um, on, on the upcoming days, uh, we just got to drill rebounding first um, and then boxing out, uh, actually making the extra pass like you, like you mentioned earlier as, as the Aces did. Uh, they, like, again, they were a solid ball club. We, we can build on things that we, we, we didn't execute as well. Um, I think down the stretch we got a lot of looks that we wanted. We just couldn't put the ball in the ring. All right, Coach Ben Creighton, thank you very much for joining me today and have a safe trip home. Thank you, sir. We are wrapping it up from Alverno College. I want to thank everyone here from the Milwaukee Aces and the staff here for uh, making us feel at home on the road.